Mm -hmm. So, but their generations are in the wild a little bit shorter than ours. So, so you have um, a long view on their family. You personally, because you you have yeah. several generations which you've known. Definitely, yeah. we're on to the fourth or maybe even the fifth now generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it's also it, it's a study, of course. Um, you've been conducting over all those decades on on chimpanzees. But what if you would? But of course, uh, like Leakey said, it would, would tell something about our behavior and where we come from as a species, but maybe, may, maybe even more where we, where we go. What, what sort of, what, what to your idea, to your mind, does it teach, just looking at them, their behavior, what does it teach us about us? Well, I think it teaches us that we have, uh, from our distant ape-like, human-like ancestor, that led on the one hand to the chimps and on the other hand, well, chimps, orangs, gorillas, on the other hand to us. It teaches us that we, I think, have inherited some aggressive behaviors, but we've also uh, brought along with us love, compassion and altruism. We've got the two sides just as the chimps have. I think what separates us more than anything else is this explosive development of the human intellect. So we now know the chimps are way more intelligent than anybody ever thought. Captive chimps have been taught over 400 of the signs used by deaf people in America, a American Sign Language, ASL. Uh, they, they can communicate with their teachers and with each other using these signs, although obviously they mostly use their own, their own communication gestures. Um, they can make paintings and tell you what they've painted. Uh, we're learning all kinds of things about their intellect. But, I mean, we designed a rocket that went to the moon and a little robot that's been photographing the surface of the moon. And, uh, sorry, Mars, not the moon, meant Mars. And uh, so we know we don't want to go and live on Mars. And it's very bizarre that the most intellectual being to ever walk the planet, which is us, is destroying its only home and destroying it so fast. So um, the biggest um, distinction maybe is that we're able to destroy everything. We are so. able to destroy everything. And it's not to say if the chimpanzees... See, I think it... I personally, there's a lot of controversy, but I think it's because at some point in our, in our past, we developed this spoken language. This, so for the first time, we can teach our children about things that aren't present, about things that happened in the past. Whereas chimpanzee children learn by watching, imitating, and practicing, which our children do as well. But we can bring people together from different um, walks of life and discuss problems and try and solve them. Seems we're not very good at this politically right now, but theoretically we should be able to. And so, you know, we, we, we have the brain to try and move out of this mess that we're in and we are coming up with technologies that enable us to live in greater harmony with nature and our own ecological footprints we can think about them and try and reduce them and if we don't and if we don't find new ways of thinking what's it going to be like for our great great grandchildren what's going to be left are you somber somber about that are you um um because if you look at the amount of woods around where chimps can live, you know, now compared to when you started in the early 60s, I mean, are you optimistic about it? Or well, I've been told that I'm an um, obstinate optimist. <laughs> so uh, the thing is that I think we have a window of time, but I don't think it's that big. I'm serious. And we've got to get together. I know we can do it. But will we do it in the time? I don't know. But why on earth else am I traveling 300 days a year around the world, giving talks, giving lectures, growing our youth program Roots and Shoots, helping young people to engage in projects that will make the world better for people, animals, environment, and trying to wake people up? Because I was given a gift of communication, and I have to use that, and I'm 84, so I don't know how much longer I have to speed up. People say, slow down. I say, no, I have to speed up. 
Because, of course, you don't know, but are you talking about a window of opportunity? How, how big should we think that is, is that, that window? Well, I think we'd better think it's quite small to put a, you know, firework under our bottoms and get us out there doing things, changing our own life. You know, that's one thing President Trump has done. He's woken people up in America. So for the first time, scientists are coming out of their ivory towers and demonstrating on the streets. They've never done that before about climate change and the need to, to stick to the, the, the uh, Paris Protocol. Yeah, that might be the good thing about it, you're saying. Yeah, that's the only thing the probably. Only, that, that, 